So if you were to ask a cinematographer, they would probably tell you to never use autofocus because controlling the focus is such an important storytelling tool. And yeah, it is. However, they're typically on crews with dedicated focus pullers to take care of that. So I'm gonna show you some ways of using autofocus to improve your filmmaking when working solo. Hey everyone, Camber here, showing you how to use your camera to make good video. So if you're new, consider subscribing and also joining my private Facebook group where I can better answer your filmmaking questions. And keeping your camera focused on what you want can be difficult when you're working alone and have moving subjects. I just released a new short film called Bedtime that I shot with just the help of one of my actors who is in the film with me, who didn't have any camera operating experience. So I'm gonna go through some of the shots where we use variations of autofocus to show you how we kept things in focus for the film. First off, here are the settings I typically use for autofocusing on my Sony a7 III. The focus mode is set to continuous autofocus, the focus area is set to wide, and I turn the face eye priority and autofocus to on with subject detection on human. All right, so this was one of the central shots in the film that I was trying to figure out how to do the best because I wanted it to be blurry in the background so I had a really shallow depth of field so that we'd be able to dub over stuff for the girls because we couldn't really count on a two and three year old saying their lines when they're supposed to. I don't need to read Peppa Pig. Honey, it is too late for a story. The easiest way you would think to probably do this is manual focus, but I'll show you why that didn't work. So go ahead and switch to manual. Good. So now it works for how it was. Manual focus, it's blurry in here. I walk up, they say something, and so I'm in focus now, but as I turn back and move and do stuff, if I'm not staying in this exact place, then I'm gonna be out of focus too, which I don't want. And that depth of field is so thin because of the aperture, it's not gonna to work too well. So see how I'm getting out of focus here if I'm moving around talking to them. So then you might think, okay, well, let's switch to autofocus. Just normal autofocus. You can talk, it's okay. <laughs> so this is why we don't wanna do normal autofocus the whole time. So now that I'm in here, you can see I'm talking to them, but I'm in focus with the room now. And then as I come back, it starts to pick up my face and focuses on me as I get here. But the problem with that is they're gonna be in focus as I'm walking and I don't want that either because I want it to stay one way the whole time with them being out of focus. So this is the way we came up with, this is a nice feature with having touchscreen autofocus. So what she's gonna do now is touch uh, my face here so it locks onto me manually. Okay. okay, so now it's locked onto my face and what's gonna happen is it's in a manual focus setting in the autofocus mode if that makes sense because she's using spot focus so the touch screen focused on me. So I'm gonna go over there, I'm gonna stay out of focus and once I get back to this point she's gonna cancel the auto or cancel the manual focus and then it's gonna pick up my face and stay with me as I move around. So you can go ahead and kind of put your thumb, there you go. So I'm talking to them, I get up, come in here, they start whining, blah, blah, blah. And as I'm moving around like this, I'm staying in focus. So that's the way we were able to use the autofocus to tell our story better with keeping the depth of field how we want it and also staying in focus the best we could when I'm using one of my actors here who doesn't have any camera operating experience. So sometimes you just gotta get creative and make it work and this worked out pretty good. The one trick we had with this though is to make sure Go ahead and hit spot focus again. So this time, click it when I'm about right here, and you'll see that it changes uh, really quick and it's not as smooth. So I'm talking to them. Go ahead and click it now. And you can see it tries to focus back in the room and then come back to me as we do that because it's picking me up and that's why we have to be really uh, precise on she's watching for when I get into focus and then canceling the manual focus setting so that this whole thing would work out. And there's one other way we can do this. Go ahead, instead of touching the uh, focus mode, turn on manual focus right now. And then once I come up, just turn the manual focus off with the same button. Blah, 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 blah. So this is a good way to do it if your camera doesn't have touchscreen autofocus, you just cancel your 
manual focus if you have a button that you can program to your camera and then that way as I get back here autofocus picks back up again and I stay in focus the whole time while we're doing the scene. So this was the most complicated one we had to do with focusing and let's move on to a few other scenes. So here we use the touchscreen autofocus again to pull focus from her to the phone. And it's pretty simple to do but first you need to make sure that function is enabled on your camera if it's equipped. On the a7 III, make sure that touch operation is set to on, and then I keep mine on touch panel only, and in the touchpad settings, have touch position mode set to absolute position and operation area on whole screen. Once that is set up, make sure the camera is set to autofocus continuous mode, and you can simply touch where you want it to focus and use that to rack focus between objects. But if you don't have this touch focus function, then you'll have to revert to manually pulling focus between objects. I used autofocus on most of the gimbal shots and it works pretty well when your subject is close so that the focus stays locked on them. Like here we made sure it was focused on me when entering the room, but then I moved over to reveal the kids and it automatically refocused onto the closest face and worked well as a smooth focus change from me to them. This was simple because I was close and it was looking at my face, though it did still lose focus on me for a moment, but not really bad enough to where it was distracting. Shots like these were pretty easy when the camera is stationary and the subjects aren't moving much because the camera can stay locked on to people's faces. Like here where we sat down, almost everyone's in focus, and I planned it so that when I talked, I'd move forward with the remote so my face would be closest to the camera and it would lock the focus on me and create a little more depth and separation from the others while I'm talking. I used autofocus on these shots as well because most of the foreground elements or people's faces were prominent and lit well enough for the camera to lock onto them. However, it didn't work perfectly. Like here it started to pick me up, but then focused on her in the foreground, then back to me and back to her again. Then here it initially picked me up like I wanted, but when she moved too close to being in front of me, it picked her up and stayed locked onto her for the rest of the take. And here it was locked onto us just fine, but for some reason it locked onto the pillar on the left before regaining focus on us. And I actually used this take in the film, but I wasn't able to use as much as I wanted because of that. So yes, using manual focus will probably assure you get better shots in your film, but that's when you have the right equipment and crew with a dedicated focus puller to do that, as well as time to set up for these complicated shots. As you saw, autofocus doesn't always work great and you may even lose a take because the focus didn't lock on correctly, but with the improvements in the autofocus technology over the last couple years, it's still a great way to get complicated shots with moving subjects while working solo. And I hope these autofocus tips were helpful for you. If they were, then please help me out by leaving a like, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you soon.